Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Tourist boat capsizes in India, southern Kerala, more than 20 killed. Residents of Pakistan's Karachi worry over surge in street crime. An IMF raises concerns about Bangladesh's economy as forex reserves fall. And now for all the details. More than 20 people drowned after a boat capsized off the coastal town of Malapuram in India's Kerala state. Large crowds of people gathered to watch as dozens of rescue workers early on Monday conducted search operations using an excavator to drag the vessel from the muddy waters back on the shore. The boat, which was carrying about 40 inbound passengers, overturned as it was overcrowded, a police official said. Deep divers were also conducting search operations underwater to look for any survivors till the last reports came in. We got a thought that 30 people were killed in a nerve and were killed in a nerve. We came here at 1.30am and we started our searching operations. हमारे पहुंचने से पहले यहां पर लगभग 20 जो है लोगों को निकाला गया है डेड बॉडीज और अभी जो हमारा ऑपरेशंस जो है चालू है हमारे डीप डाइवर्स और हमारी रेस्क्यू टीम अभी लगातार पानी में सर्चिंग कर रही है Official said the death toll was likely to rise further. About 10 passengers were currently being treated in various hospitals and many had been discharged after first aid. And a day after calling his Pakistani counterpart Bilawal Bhutto Zardari a spokesperson of terror industry, India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar said that he's a good host for good guest. J. Shankar, during an interaction on the government's foreign policy, said that Bilawal was invited in his capacity as a representative of Pakistan to put matters pertaining to the SCO. But in his media interaction after the summit, he spoke everything else pertaining to India but not the SCO meet. The Indian Foreign Minister said Pakistan conducts terrorism and asserts its right to do terrorism. You know, his past value judgments, uh, you know, from Kashmir to G20 to uh, BBC documentary, I mean, as I said, other than SEO, he's spoken about everything else. So, now, uh, what do I do as a host? See, if I have a guest who's a good guest, I'm a good host. Uh, but... Uh, Well, Pakistan's PM Shehbaz Sharif and former President Asif Ali Zardari have slammed opposition PTI chief Imran Khan after he alleged that military intelligence ISI's top office Major General Faisal Nasir tried to kill him twice and was also involved in killing of journalist Arshad Sharif. Sharif said Khan's act of routinely maligning and threatening the Pakistan army for petty political gains is highly condemnable and will not be tolerated. Zardari said Khan had crossed all limits to defame institutions. Meanwhile, reacting to the attack by the ruling coalition, PTI leader Asad Umar questioned Sharif that why he was quiet when former PM Nawaz Sharif attacked the then army chief. He accused the coalition of hiding behind army as they cannot compete politically with the PTI chief. And moving on, Pakistan's financial capital Karachi is facing an alarming increase in street crimes with residents worried for their safety. Locals have blamed it is the failure of the police, government and the judicial system highlighting that criminals now rob people in broad daylight. A report. Residents of Pakistan's financial capital Karachi have said they are worried over rising street crimes, while the law enforcement authorities in the city have failed to curb robberies, kidnappings and murders in broad daylight. Locals say the country's worsening economic crisis is forcing people to resort to unwanted crimes and the police and the government have left Karachi and its residents at the mercy of criminals. जेवर छीने जा रहे हैं अंदर दुकान पे बैठा हुआ है दुकान पे आके जो कुछ है सब कुछ लेके जा रहे हैं सेफ्टी नहीं है भाई हमें सेफ्टी दो आप महंगाई इतनी हो गई है लोगों के पास खाने को नहीं है 
اور اس کے اوپر یہ مگر یہ کہ روزانہ کا حال احوال ہو گیا ہے مگر غریب آج بھی ویسی مہنگائی سے پسا ہوا تھا اس چیز میں بالکل مر گئے ہیں آئے روز روزانہ آتے ہیں اسنیچنگ ہو رہی ہے موبائل چھین رہے ہیں چلتے پھرتے آتے ہیں ہاتھوں میں چھین کے لے آتے ہیں کسی کو مار دیتے ہیں مگر کوئی تحفظ کوئی کچھ نہیں ہے اس میں گورنمنٹ کو چاہیے کہ حاجی کو آپ کو پیٹرولنگ وغیرہ بڑھا ہے یہاں پر آپ کو آپ کا عوام کے لیے حاجی کو سہولت وغیرہ مدد کرے مگر یہاں پر نظر نہیں آ رہا ہے اس میں رپورٹ سجیسٹ دیٹ اوور ٹوینٹی ون تھاؤزینڈ کیسز آف اسٹریٹ کرائم ٹوک پلیس ان دا فرسٹ تھری منتھس آف ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی تھری الون ہاؤ ایور دا ایکچوئل فگر اپیئرس ٹو بی وے ہائر ایز اے لارج نمبر آف وکٹمس ور ایدر ڈی نائٹ رجسٹریشن آف ایف آئی آرس اور دے دیم سیلس چوز ناٹ ٹو اپروچ پولیس ڈی ٹو لیک آف ٹرسٹ اینڈ ہوپ آف ایکشن And foreign ministers of China, Afghanistan and Pakistan reached consensus over multiple topics including neighborly ties, security, counter-terrorism, connectivity, trade and investment in a trilateral dialogue in Islamabad this past weekend. Taliban's foreign minister Amir Khan Muttaki agreed with China and Pakistan to extend the Belt and Road Initiative to Afghanistan, potentially drawing in billions of dollars in the sanctions-hit country. Pakistan and China also pledged to humanitarian and economic assistance. Afghanistan sits as a key geographical trade and transit route between South and Central Asia and has billions of dollars of untapped mineral resources. The Taliban administration, which sees far in 2021, has not been recognized yet by any foreign government. And a delegation of International Monetary Fund, IMF, on Sunday concluded a visit to Bangladesh to discuss recent macroeconomic developments and implementation of the fund-supported program. Rahul Anand, IMF Mission Chief for Bangladesh, said, despite the challenging economic backdrop, Bangladesh remains one of the fastest-growing economies in the Asia-Pacific region. However, he raised concerns over the persistent inflationary pressures, elevated volatility of global financial conditions, which continues to weigh on growth, forex reserves, and country's currency, Taka. Bangladesh's foreign currency reserves slipped to a six-year low in March and amid soaring import cost. Reports suggest Bangladesh is in a position to pay around only five months' import bills. And more than 100 tribal couples exchanged marital vows at a mass wedding ceremony in eastern India this past weekend. Mass weddings are increasingly becoming popular in India as they reduce worries of monetary implications. As many as 108 couples belonging to the tribal community tied the knot at a mass wedding ceremony in India's eastern Siliguri city on Sunday. The couples donned traditional attires and performed Hindu nuptial rituals. The event was organized to help the people who cannot afford wedding ceremonies and to support people considered to be from the socially backward classes. विशेष रूप से जलपाईगुड़ी जिला और ये सिल्लीगुड़ी के आसपास का हमारा सबसे पहले कार्य खोड़ी बाड़ी में प्रारंभ हुआ था उन्नीस में घर में तो खर्चा हो जाएगा ना इसके लिए यहाँ आया है इसके लिए बहुत बहुत यहाँ आया है बहुत अच्छा लगा है Mass weddings are very popular, especially among the economically backward sections of the Indian society, as these reduce the worries of financial implications among the parents or guardians of the brides. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.